Math 1314, Tyler Junior College, section 2.5, Transformations of Functions, Vertical Stretching and Shrinking. So far, we've done six things. Move graphs up, down, left, right, reflected across the x-axis, reflected across the y-axis. The last transformations we're going to examine Sometimes they're called dilations and contractions. In this video, we're just going to call them stretching and shrinking. So instead of moving the graph or reflecting it, it's like somebody's either going to grab it by the hair and pull it straight up, or press down on it, or stretch it out or in like an accordion. Now, what invokes a stretch or a shrink? In short, multiplication. Addition and subtraction invokes translations. Negatives invoke reflections. Multiplication, and in a sense division, invokes stretching in one of two directions. So let's see what happens if we try to graph f of x equals 2x squared. Now without the number multiplied, it's just the squaring function and its graph is currently drawn on the board with five reference points. Negative two comma four, negative one comma one, zero comma zero, one comma one, and two comma four. I even use two more reference points at three comma nine and negative three comma nine, but we'll lose track of them after the transformation. So what effect will this two have that we're multiplying in front of the function? Well, think of this in terms of inputs and outputs. Without the two, the function says, give me a number, I'll square it, there's your y value. But with the two, the function says, give me a number and square it, but before I hand it off and call it the y value, I'm going to double it. That means each of our y values will get doubled. So where will these points land if we double each of the y values? Well, the origin won't move because if you double zero, you still get zero. But on the point one comma one, if we double the y value, we get one comma two. What do we get if we double the y value on the original point two comma four? We get two comma eight, clear up here. And the same thing will happen on the left side. If we double the y coordinate on negative one comma one, we get negative one comma two. And if we double the y coordinate on negative two comma four, we get negative two comma eight. And if we reconnect them, we reconnect them, we get a lot skinnier parabola. It's skinnier because the points are going up faster because of the two that's getting multiplied before saying I'm your y coordinate. Now there's actually two perspectives on this. Perspective number one, Somebody grabbed the top of the parabola and stretched it upwards. Perspective number two, somebody set up walls on either side and compressed it inwards. There's a reason why you can view this from the two perspectives, but in terms of multiplying a number in front, we're gonna view it from the stretching and vertically perspective. Each point's Y coordinate got doubled. And even if we kept track of 3 comma 9, it would be at 3 comma 18, and that's a little bit off the, off the board. So every point on the parabola is getting stretched up twice as high as it used to be. I'm not sure if that made the picture better or worse, but I tried to draw arrows from all the points on the parabola, stretching them twice as high as they used to be. So the transformation that was invoked is that it was a vertical stretch by a factor of two. So basically all the y coordinates got multiplied by two. And if it were three x squared, they would have gotten multiplied by three. It would have gotten a lot taller, a lot faster, and then at the end in a skinnier parabola. But that's a stretching. What, what's a vertical shrink? Well, a vertical shrink is the, the exact opposite. Instead of being stretched upwards, someone compressed it downwards. So for example, let's say instead of every point getting twice as high, it got half as low. What function do you think would invoke a vertical shrink to half as tall as it used to be? 
Well, don't overthink it. It would be f of x equals 1 half x squared. So multiplying in front can either invoke a stretch or a shrink, and it depends upon the size of the coefficient. Specifically, if g of x equals c times f of x, okay, so we're multiplying a number in front, then the graph of g of x is obtained by, now this time I'm going to put a colon because one of two things will happen. The first thing, stretching the graph, let me, let me back up, vertically stretching Vertically stretching the graph of f of x by a factor of c, comma, if c is greater than 1, because if you're multiplying by a number greater than 1, you get larger, so your y's get bigger, or vertically shrinking, if I can spell vertically shrinking the graph of f of x by a factor of c if c is less than 1. Remember, we're assuming the c is still positive. Uh, it got erased somewhere, but we're assuming the number in front is positive. But we know what it does if it's negative now. It invokes a reflection. Oops, not less than one half, less than one. So basically, the number you're multiplying by dictates what happens. If it's a big number, bigger than one, it stretches it by that much. If it's a small number, a number less than one, it compresses it by that much. So if it were one third, everything would be one third as high as it used to be. So yeah, all you have to do really is multiply each y coordinate by the stretching or shrinking factor, and then see what happens. Let's summarize that over here. f of c times x, no, what's the next one? c times f of x will stretch vertically if c is greater than 1 and shrink. Let's do this, this is a little crowded. Multiplying in front of the function will stretch vertically if c is greater than 1, semicolon, shrink vertically if 0 is less than c is less than 1. And again, we're just assuming the c is positive, and I'm explicitly saying it here. So it's, it's, it's a little, I mean, it's straightforward. Just stretch it or shrink it according to the multiplier in front. Don't know why I'm erasing this now. I'm supposed to erase between the videos because this video is over.